I, I will be s stress eating my. <laughs> you still, I still think we're going to finish eating the brownie before we started recording, but no. <laughs> no, I tried. It's it's a it's a gluten free brownie, and trust me when I say the gluten free brownie is better than the normal brownie. You should try it. Just saying. All right. I, I'm pretty. I have a feet. Hmm. <laughs> Come on. I think that's just the process of how you make a brownie, as opposed to like whether or not it has gluten in it because the way that i i make brownies and then i will literally just change it out for gluten-free um flour and mm. a bit of xanthan gum and it's the same it just doesn't is have it, gluten in it anymore is it yeah gone? it is it's the same <laughs> are you sure <laughs> that's kind of the idea is that you don't want it to taste any different i think it tastes better because it's gluten-free <laughs> I think that's just y your head. I think I think you think it tastes better because it's gluten free. Maybe, but uh, I had a stressful day. <laughs> so hey, I'm not like, complaining. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure if somebody were to give you the same recipe but with like gluten free, and then uh, I think you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I'm not sure, Katie. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, maybe your body would be able to tell the difference. <laughs> I would probably be like. Argh. Do you want to introduce our podcast? Oh yeah, that thing. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. And that is Lily Kay, eating. I'm eating. <laughs> I do that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you eat sometimes? That's yeah, crazy. It is unbelievable. <laughs> Truly hmm. nuts. Um, I would go with our usual thing, which is like, what did you watch? Well, we did record two days ago. Yeah, we're we're, we're doing a quick turnaround with these at the moment just because I'm working next week. <laughs> uh, so no, I haven't really watched anything. I've been playing Mass Effect for the past couple of days. I mean, that is like watching a movie, but you're part of that movie. Let's sure. be fair. Let's Do you want to hear my my my? Because I've been go I've finally gone back to Mass Effect three, and I've been playing it on my PlayStation oh. five, mm. um, which works very nicely. It's very smooth. I believe you. Thing is, I uh, I went through the mission on Tachanka. Mm -hmm. Which um, one? Because there's like three missions. The, the main one where you're curing the genophage. And then not very long after that, in fact, I think maybe the next mission, I did the Citadel, where you go to save the council. Mm -hmm. So I just was sitting there like, just lost two of the best. Because uh, my, my space husband then proceeded to die and I was very upset about this. Dang. And then I played D&D &D for seven hours. <laughs> that is like, I think if I should rank the top three saddest moments in, in the Mass Effect <sighs> trilogy, number one is more than sacrificing himself on Tuchanka. Had to be me. Someone else might have gotten it wrong. It's it was like... beautiful. I was, I was, it was, yeah. The, I can't get over. It was like, I, I literally got to, the, it was like, the Cerberus had taken over the Citadel and I went, oh no, oh no, I've done this too quickly. Oh fuck, I know what's about to happen. Oh, <laughs> Why yeah. have I done this? <laughs> Proceeding to be sending messages to my, my group Discord, just like, I'm gonna fucking kill that Kai Lang motherfucker. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, Troy. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Kai Lang's a little bitch. I hate him. I mean, to be fair, he killed my I... space husband. I know, I know. I agree. I hated Kai Lang on that level as well, but Kai Lang was a good character still. Like, I, I liked. I uh, wish. It comes from a place of like respect and love on like a character level, but also, you know. Fuck you. I, that I, guy. I... Absolutely fuck you. Uh, that's number two. Like That's why, because you already know, I told you that this is why I decided that whenever I replay Mass Effect 2... I don't like this as a concept, though. <laughs> I, have, I have to, otherwise I die. On, like, you know, my emotions just go over the roof and and everywhere because i can't i can't handle that scene in mass effect 3 where where tain dies and and you know you have to say goodbye to him 
uh, in the hospital. Call me out there. And call me out there. And it turns out that the prayer was for you. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> just like me sat there holding my playstation 5 controller like yep dude yep. yep goodbye Zane you won't be alone long yep. and, and then trying to go and talk to all my crew and none of them say anything and then proceeding to go to my messages and finding he's written you a letter posthumously and you're like oh no it's like <laughs> Uh, fuck you guys <laughs> so I can't handle it that's why I always choose to to uh, to let him die in, in the, in the in suicide, suicide mission it's just, it's just, I couldn't do that I no. I can't I can't handle nope. I can't handle three especially really like that's the Citadel DSC I'm like I haven't gotten there yet it just came up as like a thing I can do in my mission list and yeah. I'm like I need to go find out when the best opportunity to do this because I'm not doing it right now. You have to do it after uh, you saved uh, Miranda at Horizon and then you're going to have everyone there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Th right. Good to know because yeah. I haven't gotten anywhere close to that yet. Yeah. Yeah. So right know. right before the Cerberus mission, you, you have to you have to do it. I'm sure I, as soon as I, I save Miranda, I'll go do it. Let's, yeah. let's put it that way. Yeah. I, I always, once I realized it because, you know, what was really obvious that if i do it too early a lot of crew members are just not showing up i did it by accident when i did it because i didn't realize it was a dlc thing oh. so i started going through it and then the first time this is the first time i did mm. it uh, i didn't realize it was a dlc uh, piece of like um um you know the, the game uh and it just suddenly was like why has this game gotten so like completely batshit all of a sudden why is it specialist trainer talking about her toothbrush so often and it was like <laughs> part, of the, part of the way through just being like I think I've oh I think I've stumbled on something here this is like an entirely like separate thing yeah yeah and you know I I, I kind of wish you could do it right before anything yeah. happens to Morden or you have to make that choice because, you know, obviously you can choose to let Morden not cure the genophage, but then Rex... But then you're not curing the genophage. Yes, and Rex obviously finds out and, you know, there's... I never did that, by Plus the way. Plus it's so much nicer it when is. you finish the thing and Eve comes up to you and she finally tells you her name. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. like, yeah, of course I'm going to save the Krogan. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm like, I can't. Especially when you get that message from the Dalatras who's like, I'll give you all the Solarian forces if you lie to the Krogan. And I'm like, no, I'm not a no, dick. Fuck no. off. Never, never. I once tried it, like, you know, not telling them, mm. but still letting Morden cure the genophage. And then, I don't know, I just I, I just had to go back and I was like, yeah, I can. Let, oh, let's, thing, let's rewind. <laughs> something I'm, I'm, I'm anxious about, because this is the first, like I said, I've only actually played this game once before. Yeah. And the first time I didn't, I was still kind of learning the process of actually playing a Bioware game. So I wasn't, I mm -hmm. didn't know how to, you know, maximize how many, you know, power got points or what have you um so the i think we, i've spoken about this a little bit before but um i'm, I'm anxious to get to the like quarry and geth stuff because the first time I, with uh, when you go and yes. try and retake the home world because it's like you have to choose between the geth or tally or like legion or tally yeah and i was like i want to actually uplift the geth because they deserve to have their own life and then tally proceeded to jump off a cliff because I didn't have enough Paragon points to just go for both of them. And then I went, no, oh, I'm not doing this. Absolutely not. Yeah. But you can save both of them. You know I that. know, but I didn't have the points to be able to do so. That was the problem. It was like, it was grayed out because I didn't have the, re the, the reputation for it. It depends. Like, now, like, uh, not back then. Back then as well. Like, the, your choices mattered in that, in that case. In that case. Not at the ending, because fuck you for that still. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but uh in a like case a blue light show or a red light show right. or like what about this dlc green light show that we put in just to kind of <laughs> um <laughs> fuck you guys i am i, can, I still can i still can Genu i don't remember the specifics of it well enough to be mad about it is the thing so oh. uh, when i get to it again i'm sure i will have things to say <laughs> yes 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 but here uh you in in, in mass effect 2 you had to protect Tali uh, when the whole thing went down 
yeah, with, yeah. with her obviously. father. Obviously, yeah. you you shouldn't have revealed to the uh, to the Koreas that you know it was it was her father all along. It was mm. her father all. It's it's not it, it's, it's not coming out. It's too many it's syllables. Not, it's not working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then uh, you had to save the heretics for Legion. That was mm. the second thing that you had to do. And then obviously the Paragon points had to be, you know. Yeah. And oh, and and they have a fight, Legion and Tully. And yeah, yeah. you had to make that into like both of them are happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, so, have to, I have done all these things. So what yeah, would so you hope? Could, you could. Um. You could. Because that's the, that's the new system. Like that's something that they changed that mm. the Paragon And to be fair, yes, uh, when, I, when I went into... When I played Mass Effect 3 the first time, I switched from, because I played the first two on Xbox. Yes. And then on the third one, I came and played it on here and I didn't have my, I didn't have my save mm. files because I moved systems. So I, I didn't have any, like, it was none of my stuff was saved properly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, di I think that probably was not in my favor either. Probably, yeah. Also but now, because they're all on the same fucking disc, I can just, I've been taking yeah. it one over the next to the next. Yeah. It's yeah. been great. It's Fucking perfect. Um, so yeah, so yeah, but you can say both of them. I always do that's that, the, and I always cry. I'm like, <laughs> that's what I want to see. Yeah. I want to see Tally jumping off a cliff no. again. Or Le well, Legion is number three on the on the saddest things that happen oh. in, in, in Mos I, I do love Legion. I I just couldn't, and then you know when the guy shows up and and Shepard is like Legion, and I'm sorry, Commander Shepard. Ah, no. <laughs> Okay. No, it's so funny i don't remember all the specifics of three well enough to like uh so i'm like going through things and like there's a lot of this seems vaguely familiar and mm. yeah, so it's like plus i'm actually making the effort to do all of like the um hey um commander shepherd cerberus seems to be attacking some random facility i've been doing more yeah, of those me too uh because i hadn't really done them before i'm really i, I used to be very bad at doing side quests um because i didn't care about them i just wanted to do the story stuff i know but now I'm better at them. I know how video games work now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that's one, one thing I, I will say, Bioware. I uh, I was very pissed off. I even tweeted about it. I finished it. And my perfect ending, since there's no other good ending for Mass Effect 3, but the one where Shepard actually takes a breath in the end and, you know, among all the rubbles on the Citadel and everything. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's uh, if you choose... I made her become the Reapers um, oh, in my no. ending. <laughs> mm, 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 it was quite beautiful. I, 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 I liked it. Mm. No, I'm not going to lie. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, but like I, at the time, I don't think I had the... I don't think I knew about that being an option. Mm. Um, I also... Off the top of my head, don't know how you get that option. Is that the one that they put in posthumously? Yes. Then I had a no clue. I don't think I had it as an option. I think I only had the original two. Oh, so yeah, I was yeah. like, this yeah. one, at least she kind of lives on in some form or another, even if she's not like a person. I am. Um, I was like, I, I choose the only option, which is the first option where you kill the Reapers, but it also kills all the synthetics and everyone, which is. It's still fucked up because that means that the Geth and and EDR see, I think that's are... exactly why I didn't do that. Yeah, but then you do synthesis like that's you can decide that for the whole universe that oh you are now, you know, I I don't I don't think that's a good I don't know I I, eh? I, I choose that one because it turned out that with the Citadel DLC, it was the Citadel DLC I think, I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, but it turned out that. Um, uh, once they uh, say goodbye, the crew says goodbye to Shepard and, <laughs> and Anderson and all that, and you cry your fucking eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. actually a, an extra scene, like a very short one coming up, where they show, like, it's still, I think it's uh, still Hackett uh, talking, and you see the Citadel uh, uh, rubbles and everything, and then suddenly it's the end of an armor plate. And Shepard takes takes a breath, like <gasps> so. You know, assuming that he, she is still alive, because I always I always choose Jennifer Hale because she's oh, fucking yeah. awesome. Um, I was surprised <laughs> by the uh, uh, thing that the Mass Effect account shared that uh, I think seventy percent of people choose the male Shepard, and I'm like, oh. really? I just the way that you kind of if you talk to like most Mass Effect fans, I feel like it's, they're all just like femjab, obviously, right? right? I'm like, what? 
Seventy percent. Are you sure that this is correct? I don't think it's correct. <laughs> it feels weird. All my friends are playing as Femshep, so I'm we're like, all Femshep. We are all Femshep. I was watching Jennifer Hale in the Cowboy Bebop movie last night. <laughs> Jennifer Hale is awesome. Just we love that. you, Jennifer. Come and be on come. our show. <laughs> 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 but uh, that scene. I have the Vora set because, you know, obviously they changed a lot. So you no longer have to do multiplayer to have the Vora mm. set points go up to the optimal level. And it only happened originally. It only happened if it was above 5000. So it was, you know, if you did a lot of side things and, and you did the DS as you were good, it, 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 it would trigger that extra scene. Uh, but now that's gone, so that doesn't matter. Uh, and you, I think you can only go up to 10,000 or something like that. I've now reached the minimum. I, I have only just... Yeah. Like, yeah, I think yeah. I hit the minimum With just the after curing yeah, yeah. the, uh, the genovation. I was like, oh, okay, so I'm... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Technically, you're kind of already there. Yeah, so you're, good. Kind of, yeah you're kind of already there. Uh, that That is uh, the point where they open up the other possibilities as well. And then as you mm. go up... And I reach, like... I did a lot in 3 because I was like, yeah, fuck it. I love this game, so I don't care. Mm. Um, and I reached 8,000 or something like that. So not the maximum. But it's not there. Huh. And I was like, where is it? Where did it go? I was so frustrated. I was crying for a minute. For a minute. Like, oh, I'm, I, I'm dead. Caden is sad and he's crying. <laughs> and I'm gone. <laughs> and then I was waiting for like, there's going to be the breathing scene. And then it's just nothing. And I'm like, hello? <laughs> what did you do with that scene? Where is it? So I don't know what happened by where, but I need that back. Like yeah. ASAP. I mean, just quickly. Bring it back. I We'll see. I'll see if I can get the, like the whole thing up, and I'll let you know if it's in there. Please, because I'm very frustrated. <laughs> I'm like, I, I might go back. I'm not gonna lie. I might go back because I did leave out a few side quests, but not too many. Like, I, I don't believe it's it's there. all the like little ones on the Citadel when you're walking along, and somebody goes, "Hey, I need this thing," and then yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you have a new mission to go find like a piece of wood on like yes, a road yeah, 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 yeah. and I just kind of go oh come on yeah really when, when you have to travel from system to system and they are there are already reapers there and if you push the <laughs> scanning button I'm and scanning fly. around and then suddenly like, <laughs> like oh god <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and I'm like ah fuck and you have to do another mission so you can go back into the system and it's like pfft. it it's messy it's, we still love it but it's messy so I need that back like very soon, very soon. I, I, I am very frustrated with that. Uh, otherwise, it's great. And I love Mass Effect very dearly, as you can probably tell. <laughs> We've spent 20 minutes talking about Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a good 20 minutes. I will. Hmm. I, there's an honorable mention for the top three saddest moments. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, if you were choosing all the Paragon answers for the Elusive Man at the end, and, and during the whole Mass Effect 3 playthrough. So every time you meet with him, and there's a Paragon option. And you choose that. Like, you know, you try to be reasonable with him. He, he's, you can see that he's fighting. Uh, um, and and uh, what was he called? Indoctrination. The indoctrination. In the indoctrination, yeah. And, and he's trying to, you know, get the Reapers out from his head. Because he's already. We Come know on, that is. Come on. Uh, and... If you choose that option all the way through the, the gameplay, at the end when when he shows up and you are David Anderson and you can't move and all that stuff and, and you just keep choosing the Paragon, he actually drops everything like he's he's he, he did it. He got free for a second and, and you know, that he has a little bit of, of speech and Martin Sheen once again. Yeah. Did a, uh, such an amazing job and I actually <laughs> teared up because I really liked the character, like I, I think it was great. The Ocean Man's great, great. like yeah, the, you know, yeah, character and foil, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, I that's my honorable mention because I did, I did tear up on that. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do remember the first time playing through and being like, I'm picking all power gun options apart from the final fight you have with Kaling. You have there's like with the renegade like button mm. prompt and I'm like no I'm fucking doing this and it's like that's the thing you son of a bitch and I'm like yeah 
<laughs> Get fucked. Get fucked. For me, that changes to you. Because if you don't have Tane, mm. um, you can have Captain Kirahi, who is who was in the first. Game. Oh yeah, major, major, He was he was a major when you when you meet and, him in, in the third one. Exactly. So make sure you you get him and you go to the oh, I have the salary now. and home homeward. Then yeah, yeah, I got him. So yeah. has been I've, I've, I've long gone. Yes. So you know, and and he comes in and, and saves the day, and he also dies because Kai Lang is a bitch. <laughs> So when you go in with the renegade option, <laughs> you're like, this is for Major Gary. And I'm like, yeah, it works. It still works. It was it was just one of those things. I saw the button prompt. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm killing him. Yep. Sorry, Troy. You I'm right. not. <laughs> Again, I'm not. I, I know. But, you know, he was great as Kai Leng. I'm just going to put it out. I'm not. <laughs> None of this is contradictory. I <laughs> Both of these things exist in the same sphere okay i accept that anyway should we talk about the actual point of our <laughs> so this has become a video game podcast <laughs> i mean aspect, it, it's a great series it is and, and the cinematics are just like beautiful gorgeous i love i never skip i never skip okay i, I stop i stop now Sh- shut up done uh so today <laughs> we're gonna talk about <laughs> The classics, hmm. um, the 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 big, <coughs> on, miss is that a word? Unmissable. Yeah. Ah, oh, beautiful. Uh, unmissable movies that you should definitely watch, and I I mean the classics, like you know, the, the f- classics. The fun thing about the classics is I'm pretty sure most of them I haven't seen, um, <laughs> but I've seen a lot more of them now than I had, probably a year ago. So that's true. There is that. That that is that is that. Um, <clears throat> do you want to go first? Do you, do you have one you want to mention? I mean, we could start with the one I put with my background because I went and let's, um. Let's do it. I went and was like, ah, oh, man, classic movies. I should probably find a background. I don't know which one I want to put in there. And Empire has a great list of a hundred greatest movies um, from. Oh God, I can't remember. They did this years ago now. Let me see if I could hang on. That's uh, mm. great. I just put a thousand shit. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway but around like pardon me the 80 mark the princess bride came up and the princess bride is definitely one of the uh, greatest mm-hmm. movies of of all time i i found that i found the list this was oh this was this was in this year oh this was a march of this year i'm hmm. there you go um so th- this is a new list uh this was at number Ninety-three. Ninety-three. Um, okay. Ninety-three. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the Princess Bride is one of those ones that I actually did grow up kind of watching. But it was one of those ones that I definitely saw in like bits over the years mm-hmm. of like my childhood. And then it, it, it like when people talk about it, I was like, yeah, of course I've seen the Princess Bride. And in my head, I'm like, have I actually ever sat down and watched the entirety of the Princess Bride from the beginning to end, or have I just happened to have seen all of it like in like segments it's over segments. the years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when we actually sat down and watched it whenever we did that i don't remember where it was now but a year ago like around it was oh, something this time. Like, it was something like i can't i feel like it was like sooner than that it was just why it was like oh no no, no. it was it was around it was August. definitely okay yeah um it yeah. was my movie night by the way yes it was <laughs> and it's it's a great fucking film which is hilarious it's it's like it's, i mean it's rob reiner who just apparently has made all of the best movies basically yeah that we are um, close with then. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fucking hilarious. It's one of those ones that my parents have always quoted, like, all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's a selection of, like, a few movies that I can think of off the top of my head that my my mother, my, my parents will quote a lot. And this is definitely one of them, along with Toy Story. Um, and The Incredibles also gets quoted a lot in our house. <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, it's just it's hilarious. And it's got the incredible cast and mm-hmm. rodents of unusual size. <laughs> You, I seem to remember, weren't a big fan of it the first time we watched it. Nope. nope. Have you come around on this fact? Yep. Good. I did. I did. <laughs> because, you know, it's, it was like, it was once again the over high for me. Yeah. You know, like that's something that always, like, 
people start talking about it and it's obvious that they mention it as, as a classic and I, 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 ex I expect a certain level in there. And I guess it, it, it was like so different from what I'm used to when it comes to the word classic and the biggest hype that goes around those movies well deserves all uh, that it, it confused me at first I was like hmm. <laughs> Just, hmm I I don't really understand I you know I I, I love the cast I, I I love the names the hilarious names like Princess Buttercup is my favorite thing I'm not gonna lie but I just I couldn't get in and then I went back and I watched it again like weeks 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 later uh, in the quiet of like, your own home without anybody talking to you over over the top of it exactly exactly and then I was like oh okay I, 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 I think I, I think I can see why why is this something that people love and then I went back a third time and then I was like yeah yeah, this movie rules. It just does. It's just, it's just great. I couldn't tell you why it's great. I think it's because, yeah. I think it's because it it doesn't take itself seriously. Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It is in that space of like having the. It's got a very specific sense of humor that I feel like oh, you yeah. don't get in in these sorts of. You don't get movies that are kind of written like this anymore, which is one of the reasons I think I love Stardust so much, because I think oh, it yes, has yes, a very yes. similar kind of magic to this film. That's true. In that vibe of just sort of like, it's a fairy tale. Everything's, everything's very silly, but it also still takes the heart of the movie incredibly mm. seriously. Um, and it's just, oh, it's fucking funny. <laughs> we love Stardust here. Stardust is great. I was talking about um, this movie, but yeah, like, but I guess I, it kind of applies to both. It, it, it applies to both, let's be fair. <laughs> You know, so yeah, I, I, I surrender I, to me very well. I accept. <laughs> oh, god, they're great! It's great, it's good. good choice. Good choice. I like that. I like it's that. A great movie. It yeah. is a great if you movie. haven't watched it, do sit down and just give it your attention and allow it to be wonderful and slide over you. It is wonderful. He's mostly dead. <laughs> Uh, I love that. Have fun storming the castle. <laughs> That's one of the ones that my mom usually says quite a lot. <laughs> it's it's a good one. Let's be fair, it's a good one. Um, okay, I have many. Which one should I go with first? I don't know. This is up to you. I don't know what's on your list. <laughs> well, let's let's go with the one that is it's, it's next to me. I got this okay. from okay from the end. <laughs> I obviously have the movie itself this is this is the book this is like you know it's it's everything that you need to know about the Shawshank Redemption and how it was made in the 25th anniversary uh it came out on the 25th anniversary of the film Shawshank Redemption was written by Stephen King who's awesome is it, it also was the story also called the Shawshank Redemption like the, and, the book and Rita Hayward uh. yeah it was what they no, wait, 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 wait. I have to double check it. Because it, it definitely has Rita Hayward in, in there, but... Uh, what, what year did it come out? Uh, the movie? Yeah. 1994. 94, so it would be in here. So I've just, I pulled up my 1,000 movie, 1,001 movies you must see before you die. Uh, this is not an updated version. This is the one from 2013, so it only goes up to the year 2013. I'm just curious as to what this book has to say about it. Uh, oh yes, please check it. I will find the original title. Um, Re uh, it, so it was the other way around. It was Rita Hayward and Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption, that so makes it's, sense. You know, other way. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Uh, much, of horror, uh, much of horror writer Stephen King's work has been successfully translated into the screen, but the best adaptations are arguably the ones as non-horror short stories like exactly. Stand By Me and the reworking of the tale originally titled Re with Rita Hayworth and the mm -hmm. Shawshank Redemption. Redemption. I should have just got this out. <laughs> um, and the Green Mile. We have to put that down. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't actually that. seen the Green Mile, but I have mm, heard good things. You have to get around to that. It's one of those things where it's just like you hear a, a, a movie that is like kind of a classic and then suddenly it's like, oh, it was a, it was a Stephen King story. Yeah. I, mean, I see. Man, that man has been writing a lot. He, he has been. He truly has been. I am, I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> sorry guys you don't mind this in a podcast <laughs> I just decided to fucking leave <laughs> how about I read this little paragraph out about the Shawshank Redemption that's oh down here. Yes, please. simply and movingly played by Freeman and Robbins the beautifully scripted uh, and beautifully scripted by director Frank Darabond 
uh, who keeps close to the source material. The only major change being that Red was an Irishman in mm, King's story. Did King's not know that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Shawshank is an intelligent, engrossing tale, rich with characterization that, although not a box office success on its initial release in 1994, has deservedly become a must-see movie thanks to the word of mouth in the years since. I went. I went for this. <laughs> It's it's right next to me. I have I have this 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 thing here. You know who's? Oh God, who's just, we're really moving today, you're, aren't we? You're, you're moving today. Uh, those who are just listening, this is my. Oh God! Oh my God! Wait, <laughs> I got lost. Wait, I can't do this. So the, the, these are. I would my... like to ap apologize to everybody who might have some kind of form of vertigo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I have many movies here, and hmm. I have even more there on on that big one where Tommy Stark is. Is, is, is just loving us uh, and I don't have uh, I don't have enough light <laughs> <laughs> sorry for those who are just listening I apologize I showed my 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 DVD and Blu-ray rack that is next to my and TV. also her entire bedroom <laughs> my entire bedroom yes uh, but, uh, but yes this is uh, if you watch our uh, top five favorite movies mm. this is my number one like it's it's yeah. it's a must um, it's a lovely it's such a it's such a pure movie you know mm -hmm. just about friendship yes which is one of the most important things to me and mm. uh, you know i always say that uh i always looked for friendships like uh red and, and andy red. has or uh john coffee and paul edgecomb has in in the green mile or any Listen, French are written by yes, Stephen King. <laughs> basically, uh, Stephen is great when when it comes to writing uh, about friendships. Like you know, I love the friendship between the Losers Club. Uh, club. I can't speak today. Club in it. <laughs> uh, I uh, I love the friendships in Saving Private Ryan, which is one of my other favorite movies. Uh, Stephen Bucky, forever and always. And I always I was always looking for my other half, you know. And I found it. Aww. It's winking. It's you know I'm not yeah, no, having I got a stroke. It. It's I'm I know not... I got it. Okay, you're good. good. Okay. <laughs> it's just... I don't think your winking is nearly as bad as you think it is. Is it not? I no. Think I think it's kind of horrible. <laughs> I can only vaguely wink with this eye, and even then, it, I'm I'm only just keeping the other one open. Can't do it the other one. Yeah, I can't. I can't. But uh, yes. So please watch Shawshank Redemption. Because you're gonna have an awesome time. Shawshank was one of those movies that, like, I mean, you definitely hyped it up, but like everybody does, because it's like people just talk. It's like it's a great movie. Like my mother, even like she was like, it's just wonderful, and I was like, okay, I guess we'll watch this. And it was just sort of like, you know what? Yeah, this is a, just a good. This is just, this just is a good movie. It is just. It's, oh. I mean, I do love a movie that you can, like, no matter what has been said about it, you can sit down and go, ah, right, I yeah. see. Okay. This is great. I'm yeah. sorry. And now I'm going through this list of, of 100 greatest movies and, and seeing if there's anything interesting in here. That, um, But uh, have you got... What about another one? Why don't you give me another one? Because I can't... Oh, I will disappear again then. Give me Are you, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, 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 you know... <laughs> We could have waited and like you could have gotten like a bunch of stuff out before we started recording. It's all good. I can't do this. I have it. Uh huh. Whew. Whew. Since we already mentioned it, I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pull That's out the, the green mile. mile because I. By the way, I have these movies in many uh, different formats. Like I mm -hmm. have them on VHS. Kids, do you know what VHS is? Like that's before DVDs and Blu-rays. Just saying. I'm. You know I. I'm a woman. Okay. No, <laughs> VHS is not that old. <laughs> And most kids know what a VHS tape is. I know kids that are like, what the fuck is a VHS? Like, it's some kind of retro thing. It's not that old, okay? We're not that old. <laughs> the thing that really fucks me off is when people, like, come, like, will uh, talk to me and say, you know what a VHS is? Like, yes, I grew up. I had VHS tapes growing up. I had Laserdisc growing up, you know? <laughs> I'm aware that I'm younger than most of the people that I maybe interact with, but I'm not a child. <laughs> Oh god. Um so what you need to know about the Green Mile. 
is that it was once again directed and written by Frank Darabont. Uh, and it is once again based Aww. on a Stephen King novel from 1996. I, I just thought that Michael Clark Duncan was, um, yeah. was in it. He was, he was John Coffey. And he is just... He's just the greatest. He's wonderful. He was just the greatest. We miss you. You tell God the Father. It was a kindness you done. We miss you. Um, I am trying to find because it has a very different title originally. Uh, but I can't seem to see, to see if I can find it in my book. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's probably it's, it's definitely in here. You know, you know, it's gotta be. Yeah, I, I mean, I am a hundred percent sure that I would, I would quote it the wrong way. Like, I am just not good with names and titles. It says Stephen mm. King's uh, novel of the same name, but I am pretty sure it had a different name. I mm. can't find it. It should be in there. If it's not it's in not there, in then here. just fucking drop that book <laughs> out of the window. It is. Like, ah! It is. Oh, hang on. Maybe it might be um, in 2000 because apparently it came out in the UK in 2000. Yes. Wait, I'm going to... if, it, if it's not there, that book is wordless. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Dragon, dragon, rings. Oh, no. Nope, it's not in his. Are you kidding me? Wait, now I'm going to grab my copy. <laughs> This episode's a fucking mess. <laughs> I, I I was ah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, that does not have Avatar on the front it, of it. it that it, decidedly has um, Black Swan. Uh, it's, it's, it's on the side. Um, and I, I have... These marks are the movies I did not see. Mm. And it's, uh, I think I should already take out a few. <laughs> there are so many goddamn movies in this thing that I have never seen. Like, so many. Some of them which I actually haven't heard of either. Because, I mean, this goes all the way back to 19... Oh, God. 1903 is the first one. That's the Great Train Robbery. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of skips a little bit because there's not as many in the earlier er er ages. Oh, that's The Godfather. I now can say I've seen The Godfather. We watched yes. that. The movie, not the movie night. I haven't seen the other two, though. I know that people say The Godfather Part 2 is, like, the best one, and I just haven't watched it. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. They, they, are not, they are not easy to process. The, the I just... I, I, will not, I don't think I'll ever really properly get on board with gangster movies. Mm, fine. They're not my bag. I'm, I'm going to drop this book in the trash. It's not in there either? Because it's not in here. And I, that's, that wow. frustrates me so much <laughs> like I, I don't have the right words to tell you how much it frustrates me because this movie is really really good uh it's like it's 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 a tearjerker one it's like i i lose myself into this movie uh it has tom hanks it has michael Clark duncan it has sam rockwell mm, i did see that sam rockwell is amazing in this one very scary very scary and very disgusting as well. Is the movie actually over three hours long, or is, is Google is. lying to me? No, it wow, is. it is. Jesus, it is. It is, and and it it's it's worth it. Trust me. Like I, you, you're not even gonna feel the three hours. Bless you. Uh, Thank my you. Child. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Please pardon me. It's yeah. It happens. You're drinking coke, so you know, it it happens. Um, Just full of air, you know. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but but. Since since we are here, you know, watch the Green mm -hmm. Mile. Very important message. Frank Darabont is is, is uh, the director again, and it's based on Stephen King novel. Uh, but this also came up, and it's saying is that private, saving private Ryan? Ryan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's just like I can't see it. No, it's saving private. Ryan. It, it is saving. If it's not in your book, they oh, took it's it definitely. Out. I saw it. I saw it as I was Good. flipping through. Good. Good. Um, if they dare to take this out, I'm I'm hunting them down. I don't know who's the writer. Who's the writer of this? Stephen J. A... Schneider. Schneider? Schneider. Like Rob Schneider or something like uh, that. What year was it again? I can't remember. Uh, 1998. Yeah, this is so. my other favorite movie. It's, it, it, I, I believe it was my number four. Uh, so. Yep, there it is. Yeah, good. Show me the show me. Oh, they use the same picture. Yeah, I think a lot of the times they, it's it's a lot of it is the same, and then they just revise it and they get rid of a couple so that they can put more in because it's still going to be a thousand and one, and they can't. <laughs> the more movies come out, they have to take some out. I mean, fair, fair. 
I'm not, I'm not even gonna blame them. Um, Saving Private Ryan is one of the best war movies that you can <laughs> you can watch. It's uh, it's obviously uh, somewhat of a made up story uh, in that these soldiers never went to save Private Ryan, uh, but it is based uh, on a true story that is actually mentioned at the beginning, uh, and it happened during Abraham Lincoln's time. Yours very sincerely and respectfully, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, when um, I think it was five brothers, four of them died, uh, and uh, a platoon went uh, to save the fifth one. But I believe they were unsuccessful. Mm -hmm. So in the end, uh, that mother lost all five of his children to the war. Oh. Um, and Saving Private Ryan is basically an extension of that on, you know, how how that it, it, how it would uh, go down and what would happen during World War Two. Um, Tom Hanks is in it again. Tom Tom Hanks is everywhere. Tom Hanks is fucking great. <laughs> and... Was that was that thing of like if if a nun punched Tom Hanks, mm -hmm. it's like it's something like that. It's it somebody would be like. Um, Oh god! It, there was like a, oh no! If it was if there was like a like a, a tweet or something ages ago that was like if Tom Hanks punched a nun, somebody would be like, "What did the nun say to Tom Hanks?" Because it's like it's Tom Hanks. It's Everybody Tom Hanks. loves him. <laughs> it's, it's Tom Hanks. Like, come on, he's a sweetheart. Like, I love one of my favorite videos of him. He has many of this, like meeting fans and and just randomly meeting people, and and there's two that I love. One is uh, when he's running in Central Park. And uh, he runs into a, um, um, a couple who is just celebrating the, their wedding and they are doing the creative shots and, and he just stops by them. They do, they are not even aware at first that it's Tom Hanks and he just stopped by them and he's like, hi, I'm Tom Hanks, Harry, you take a picture. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> like, you know, I would lose it <laughs> if yeah. that was me. <laughs> and they are just like in awe of like, what the hell happened? And he's he's just so sweet, you know, he's, he's awesome. He's woody. <laughs> He's witty. That's, that's the thing for me. It's like he's, <laughs> he's, witty, he's witty, which I will say. I think I think Toy Story has to be up there in my like. Oh yeah. Classic. Yes, it's Toy Story. It's, it's the yeah. greatest. It's set of fucking movies one... about childhood and, and growing up. Exactly. Ugh. It's one of the first three D animated movies as well. It is. So. It was the first. It was. I think. It, I believe it was the first fully computer animated three D. It was. Yeah. Film. Yeah. Um. That's it's just the, the greatest. Yeah, I, I, Oz, the monkeys aren't working. <laughs> We're formulating another plan. <laughs> Stay calm. Stay calm. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Saving Private Ryan also has Win Diesel, by the way. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say, and and he's great. He doesn't have a big role, but uh, what he does is is just you know he's he's great. Everyone is great, and we have Matt Damon in there. Uh, we have Matt so many great Damon. actors. Matt Damon. I can't not do it. I've seen that movie <laughs> once, and now it's still in my head. It's like, Matt Damon. <laughs> it's great. It is great. Um, so yeah, I I uh, I I said now three. So. Mm. I will give the word back to you. Yeah, well, I stand by mentioning Toy Story definitely. Yes. Um, I know I've I've mentioned it's one of my top. It was in my one of my top five movies and definitely mm. Fight Club because that is like oh, yeah. full cult classic status. And that was a movie that I was so glad that I went into completely blind. Oh yeah, you because it was to. like. You, people you... people talk about Fight Club and I was just like, I guess there's like some fighting in it and then it, it, the thing that really surprised me like when I first started like looking at it and was like, maybe I'll watch this was like, there's lots of soap in this film. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. But like that movie really fucking rules. Um, that's the movie that kind of started my little love affair with, with David Finch films. I still haven't watched Mank. I should do me, that at some point. Me neither. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, me neither. My dad watched it and, and he said it was alright. Which is, mm. you know, it's it's not much, but uh, I think when when it comes to a Fincher movie, all right, is still like the quality of this is still excellent. It's just maybe not as interesting or as good I as mean, other films. Yeah, yeah, that's completely fair. Uh, yes, yeah, so oh, Fight yeah, Club I mean, is just Fight Club just rules. As every time somebody goes, I haven't seen Fight Club. I'm like, don't. If, do you know anything about it? Nope. If you don't know anything about it, just 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 trust me. It's yes. beautiful. 
the tension that builds up. And I think everybody talks about how good Brad Pitt is in that movie, but I stand by Edward Norton being the standout part for me because I wasn't, because I think maybe I was expecting Brad Pitt to be excellent, which obviously he is. He does the crazy thing very well. Mm. Um, but fucking Edward Norton in that film is so goddamn good. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this guy can act. Yeah. I, I will have to highlight Helena Bonham Carter. Oh yeah, fucking... Oh, come on. Um, Marla. I was like, Marsha, and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Marla. Marla. Slide. She's, she's, she's just, she's great at everything for me. She but... is, but like, I think that is very good. She, fuck, I love that movie so much. It is. It's one of those movies that like, I love on a really nerdy technical level like the film student part of my brain looks at it and goes oh fuck this movie's so fucking small yeah yeah i have to agree it's um there are yeah there are a lot of yeah there are some people i've talked to before about Mm. how they feel like by studying film it would ruin it for them and i feel like maybe in some ways like there are some movies you can't just like kind of enjoy on like a base level yeah um as much because you're like it's too busy sitting there going like this movie doesn't make any fucking sense which means that i have like a a high i guess a higher standard for shit films like it can be shit as long as it's fun but like if it's just shit then i'm like no i'm not enjoying this or if it's like just average i usually don't like it as much as maybe some people who can just be like yeah that was a film but i think the good movies that are even like technically brilliant you get like an extra level of this like this movie is it's like I don't think you understand how fucking smart this film is. <laughs> you just sit there going, "No, you don't get it." There's, yeah. like, there's there's stuff going on in the background that you should be looking at because it's like all. <laughs> that sort of stuff. It's... Those are my favorite films, especially the ones with the really simple directing. We are just suddenly like, or like, True. I will never get over. There are like I can't think of any in like films at the moment, but there's like a couple in specific. There's one in an episode of Leftovers that I love. I love a simple cut that can because it's like there's a whole russian theory called um uh fuck kuleshov i think is his name the kuleshov effect wherein the idea yeah. was the the, the no. i'm gonna give a bunch of film theory now for the people listening at home kuleshov was a russian um filmmaker who was um, who in the period of soviet montage where they basically suggested that filmmakers do this a lot nowadays as well it's a very common uh, thing of filmmaking it's one of the things that kind of brought editing forward um if you put in and you can look this up on youtube very easily uh they they basically edited together the face of a man looking very impassive and then they edit it next to like i think it's like some food mm-hmm. and then it they cut back to the face and then they cut it back to like some people hugging and then they cut back to the face and then they get they like a grave and it's like the face of the person stays the same the entire time, but audiences would read different emotions off of the face because of the thing that came before it. And it's about our ability to kind of project emotion onto to people in film. And it is also about conveying meaning between shots. So some of my favorite jokes are edits where they it's like somebody being like, man, who would be stupid enough to do that? And then they cut to somebody doing like something. And it's like, that is just hilarious to me. It's like, you're you're telling a joke just through a simple cut and that is never not funny um but you get the same through like drama as well where you can cut from somebody or like you can you can cut like a certain event next to somebody's reaction and then just extrapolate from there the thing that happened and you don't need to say anything so the brilliance of being able to show and not tell Mm. like those are the best types of like bits of filmmaking and i think some of these do that probably in the best and i think fight club does that in a very spectacular way in like the really small stuff so there's like if you look into the background of fight club there's there's bits and pieces really early on where it's like there's graffiti on the wall being like myself and like um mm. talking about that sense of self and there's like the, the the these are some of the more famous things like the um the single frames of something i will leave that for people to (laughs) look into and and it's like yeah yeah, it's um which they bring into the narrative which i think is fucking brilliant oh it's the it's the nerdy bits of filmmaking those are the when when films are like really good at those Mm -hmm. incredibly nerdy bits Mm -hmm. for me i'm like yes this is good because there's like 
there's like good storytelling and then I think there's good filmmaking. Yes. And I think that's one of the reasons why and we've spoken a little bit about before um, when we talk about Christopher Nolan. I think Christopher Nolan's very good at good filmmaking. He's one of those people who understands the medium that he's playing in. Yes. And I don't think there's actually as many directors who understand that as probably think people mm. think there are. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yeah. That's anyway, my, that's my my incredibly nerdy rant about the incredible minutiae of filmmaking. Completely fair, and that's why I will throw in Christopher Nolan's Memento, which is yeah, it's that is he's very good at structural filmmaking. Yeah, like I I, I do marvel at the at his ability to kind of like I will continue to make fun of and get a bit exasperated by his inability to make a movie that isn't fucking about with time <laughs> like my guy chronological chronological filmmaking is not a bad thing you don't have to just screw with time for no reason it's fine but it's- memento is specifically built to be like that mm-hmm. and it's kind of incredible how seamless it is considering it's like literally telling a story forwards and backwards at the same time and you still aren't aware of what's going on properly until the point it kind of reveals itself it's like that but what's beautiful filmmaking yes but what what makes it even more beautiful is when you when you're watching it the first time you're in for a big fucking surprise in the end you're like Mm. what i i like it broke my heart it did really sad it is really sad it's like you can't even wrap your head around it at first uh but but what it does very well is the same thing that fight club does very well is that when you go back and watch it again it's all there mm. it, it 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 tells you what's gonna happen and it, it 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 you know it's it's all in the small details around the characters and everything so you can actually figure it out like Oh shit! It was, yeah, it's like, it was right in front of us. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love complaining about this because it still fucks me off. Um, it, it's like the opposite of um, uh, Mulholland Drive. Oh yeah, because Mulholland Drive, I was fine with as a film. I watched it and I was like, this was very confusing and dreamlike, and I guess that's kind of the point. And then I read a quote from from David Lynch on wikipedia where he was like there is a coherent story in there and i'm like where where, where? the fuck is it stop yeah. acting like you're smarter than me because you wrote this movie and you're acting like there's a fucking coherent story in here it's not there and it's fine that it's not there but don't act like i'm dumb because i haven't fucking i i can't see what it is your master plan is because if you really wanted people to understand it then you would have made a more coherent film and i i it's just that really fucked me off the first time I read that I was like no and it means that I now dislike that film on principle yep I, I, I have I have to agree not gonna lie I'm like, yep. I what else agree. is it you know what let's go look through here I there are a lot of films in here because this I haven't seen a lot of films from probably before the 70s I'll put it that way so there's like a lot of real classics I haven't seen things like um what, what's in here? Doctor Strange Love or any Hitchcock film? You haven't ever. seen any Hitchcock films. I haven't seen any Hitchcock films. No way. Um, I haven't seen. This is just me outing myself now. Yep, there's Psycho. I haven't seen that. Um, Psycho's amazing. A lot of these are uh, from. Yeah. I'm. I'm seeing. I've seen Twelve Angry Men. That's apparently in very very good. Mm-hmm. I just haven't watched it. Or in like the fifties now. I'm thinking of one. Um, what, what is the one I'm thinking of? Um, shit, Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. My... Yeah. Um, no. Oh, is bad. that the one I'm thinking of? Um, what is it about? <laughs> I. I'm just, all I can think is it's the one that Julian Anderson played the main character um, on stage for a little while because it's also a really famous stage play um, about like a woman kind of losing a. Chip, I think, and it's about like Hollywood and stuff. Um, is it Sunset Boulevard? It's hmm. Hmm. the name Stella's coming to mind, and I don't actually know if that's to do with what I'm thinking of. No, that's that's not. No, no, it's not. No, no. What the fuck am I thinking of then? Hang on. 
until you find it, it, I I will I will highlight one thing that I uh -huh. I can't agree with. Uh, they have paranormal activity here as a must see movie. And don't get me wrong, I love my horror films, but I the original paranormal activity I can see why it's in there because that was a quite the indie uh, explosion. Now it it was, what that movie uh, did in terms of um, uh, like I did, obviously it, it created a lot of sequels that were subsequently probably worse and worse and worse and worse. Yes. But it's um because I did a lot of research onto um independent filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That movie was made for a tiny fucking budget yeah. and did extraordinarily well. So yeah. I can see why on that level it is it is in there. Like, don't get me wrong, it's I I I like this movie uh, mm. and I appreciate it for what it is. Uh, you know, and knowing the history behind it and everything, uh, but I'm like, I wouldn't call it a must-see. I, I wouldn't put it that. Like, if you are into um, these kind of uh, found, because it's it's basically to some level it's a found footage movie. We mm. can call it that. Uh, and if if you like that, I like those kind of films. I, I think they can be very very good. Uh, my only problem with it was that it was very it was a very slow reveal and you know knowing the other ones and what they made out of it it's like you kind of ruined it <laughs> with those movies like uh, i don't think it was necessary to connect everything back to this film and and that's exactly what they did like you know we didn't we didn't need uh, the main character to turn out to be that uh, she was already haunted uh, back in her childhood that there's a whole ass movie talking about their childhood and in, and then it turns out that it was actually it's not even a poltergeist it's it's actually witches and uh, and it's like why did you do this with this movie i know that you have to put something in there but trust me this movie and 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 the sequel the sequels could uh, could have worked if it would have stayed just a, a good old poltergeist hunting movie which mm -hmm. it, it works it, you don't you don't have to explain everything that's what i'm it trying is, to say <laughs> it is that thing of like having a really good concept and then that concept doing really well and being like okay how do we do more yeah and it's like no yeah. don't do more no, do don't less do, more. do less exactly exactly it's like it, it do less than you think you need to do yes. it's not necessarily that you do just entirely less like you take yeah, things yeah. out because i think at that point you start stripping things you oh, don't need but yeah. it's like if your um uh your instinct is to go we'll put more stuff in here take most of it out yeah it's that it's that thing of like that kind of writing um thing where it's like here's your film or like here's your like uh, story or something delete the last sentence see if it still makes sense um it's a, it's, a, it's a very good sort of uh, tactic or tactic, Tec writing te technique. technique. Technique is the word I was like, I guess you could call it a tactic. But technique is the word I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, also, the movie I was thinking of was Street Gargan Desire. Oh, 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 yeah. It was like there was S's in there and I was like, it's something like this. And it's her name's Blanche in it. Stella was the name of her character and like, you know, uh, the, the fall. That was the yeah. series that she was in. I was just. <laughs> mixing, up, you know, mixing up my uh, my what are they called? Julian Anderson movies. That's fine. I haven't there seen them. I'm, I'm going to say it now. It, it... There's so many movies on this list that I'm looking at. Like, haven't seen Fargo. I'd like to see Fargo. I just haven't gotten around to fucking watching it yet. But do I will say because if we're talking about the Coen Brothers, Inside Well and Davis, I think maybe one of my favorite. Like, kind of underrated movies in my own head right. you know it's like it's right. up there as like i love that movie but i don't necessarily talk about it all that much yeah it's fucking that's i love that's a, such a beautiful film mm -hmm. um and very interesting structurally as well yes because it's kind of cyclical cyclical is that no no it it goes it's it's ah oh, fuck it goes in a cycle you know yeah that's the one <laughs> uh, Donnie Darko was a weird movie that was nothing like I thought it was going to be when yeah. I watched it. But it's, I mean, it's a good movie. I really should watch it again because I've only it seen it the once. It but it was like, I was, I think in my head, I was expecting it to be more like in vibe fight club, I guess, in that it was like, something weird's going on and it kind of has a twist at the end of it. But it was like, oh God, this movie has like time travel and, and stuff. And, and I'm like, 
oh, this is a very strange film. But obviously, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal is very good in it. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome. Jake Gyllenhaal is awesome, exactly. Yeah. Easy as that. <laughs> uh, I will say another one. Okay, which you is say another one. Underrated, in my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. And it's another Tom Hanks movie, and one of my favorites called Road to Perdition. Uh, and uh, this is it's it's something that I found out years later. Uh, it it is based off a graphic novel, and I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, huh. I was like, "That's new information." I didn't know. Um, it was directed by Sam new Mendes. Information. Yes. <laughs> um, it has a a very young. Um, oh my god, I forgot his name. Wait, 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 wait. I have to. What's his name? I don't know I, what you're um, talking about. Um. <laughs> Because I, because I have Ty Sheridan in my mind, but it's not Ty Sheridan. It's uh, Tyler Hoechlin. Uh, is... Oh my god! <laughs> Tiny baby! Yep, uh, there he is! T t t t t t Tyler. My god. Yeah. It, you've infected me with the brain worms. <laughs> <laughs> Can't speak. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's a Sam Mendes movie. I didn't it is know a Sam that. Mendes movie, yeah. And uh, Tyler plays uh, Tom Hanks' son in this one. That's very and, cute. And uh, it's, a, it's a mafia story, uh, which I tend not to like as much. Yeah. I don't really like mafia uh, things. Like, yeah, I, I th they kind of live in the same space for me, like mm. gangster movies. Yeah. Because, I mean, mafia is... <laughs> yeah, basically. I When it's really good, then I, I, I yeah. really love it. But I uh, think it's one of those things where it's like the genre needs to be uh kind of separate from the the quality of the storytelling mm. you know what i mean mm. like if the, the storytelling kind of needs to overshadow the genre of the thing that it's in yep. right because i also don't have a thing i'm just westerns do nothing for me nope. either but red Dead redemption 2 was fucking brilliant as a mm -hmm. game <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. same for me like uh, the mafia games I really love those. I love the Mafia games. I like the story that's in there, and it was, you know, it was something new and exciting. Uh, I obviously do like The Godfather. Like that's a classic, classic that we already mentioned. Uh, mm. But this, this is the other one. This I can watch a hundred times, and and it 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 never gonna get boring. It has Paul Newman, John uh, Lowe, uh, Jude, Tom, Jude, thank you, uh, Tom Hanks, Tyler Hoechlin, uh, uh, Daniel Craig as well. It's a very good movie. And I will say the funny thing for me is that I'm looking at it on Google and the way it's because, you know, it's got the banner on the side and yes. gives you all the information and stuff. So it's 2002 and then when, on the genre it goes crime dash crime. <laughs> Double crime. <laughs> it's, 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 it's more crime. Um, and uh, I have a funny story with this uh -huh. uh, of why, why I watched it. Can you check what's the other kid's name in there? Who plays him? I think it's it's Liam. Something. Hang on. I'm getting the cast up. Uh, who are you looking for? Uh, the other son. Uh, of, of what is the other son's name? I don't know. I don't remember. Liam. I can. That's that's the one. So I watched it because of him because uh, Lemony Snicket uh, came out. Uh, like the original, the original. Uh, 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 series of unfortunate events. Yes, uh, and you know I I really liked uh, how he played in that movie, and I was like I should, you know, look up other films from him, uh, and that's how I found Road to Perdition, and I was mm -hmm. like okay I watched it. I didn't know that what what his fate is gonna be in this movie, so that was like oh god, <laughs> it was kind of disappointing. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it brought me to another big favorite because uh, I've been in love with this movie ever since. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, one of Tom Hanks's best films uh, other than Saving Private Ryan for me, like, and The Green Mile. Tom Hanks is great. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the message. Tom Hanks is great. Watch True. Tom Hanks. He movies. is. <laughs> <laughs> he is great. I just found uh, Back to the Future oh, in uh, here, which obviously... Heck yeah. I saw all the Back to the Future movies. I, my my school used to have a film club on Tuesdays, uh, so I watched all three um, like in preceding weeks mm. uh, of, of all the Back to the Future movies. Um, and yeah, I mean they're obviously great. I remember really liking the third one, despite the fact that I feel like a lot of people don't like the third one very much. Also, she's gone again for the people who are. are uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> you're listening. She's just disappeared again. Um, ha, I'm back. Back to the Future is one of those ones that I think people have a way closer relationship to than I ever probably will with it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a wonderful film, honestly. It is. It is. <laughs> but also, you know, it's very strange in that he goes back and then he, he fucks his mother and you kind of like, this movie's very bizarre. <laughs> and so they go to the past. No, back to the future. Sorry, there's John Mulaney bit about like the naming of Back to the Future, which does make sense despite what he's, he's making out in that in that bit. It's the fly. Old David Cronenberg film. I really need to watch. Sorry, I've just found Top Gun. And I'm like, I really should watch Top Gun. <laughs> Considering the next Top Gun movie is meant to come out this year. And I'm like, I should watch Top Gun. I don't like Top Gun. Yeah. I'm not, not going to lie. I, that's that's something that I did watch. And I, it just, I just couldn't. I couldn't get on board with it. But uh, to to get back to you, back to the future for one second. Mm. <laughs> Nowadays, if if it comes up. I can't think of anything else but poor Rod in Endgame saying, so Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm seeing his face so clearly in front of me and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poor Rod is great. <laughs> he is. I love oh, poor Rod. Uh, <laughs> Thin Blue Line, I haven't seen that. Um, um, what else? Oh, Fish Called Wanda. There are like a lot of movies. So many times I see movies and I'm like, I should watch that, and no, I just don't. Um, I just don't. <laughs> that is my life. Uh, like, I I did watch one Harry, Harry Met Sally actually relatively recently, and that is that really is like when Harry Met Sally was one of those ones where it's like people were like it's one of the best rom coms of all time, and mm-hmm. I'm like, sure. And then I watched it, and was like, no, this just is good. It is, you know. Yes, hundred percent. And it, I feel like it should bother me on a more like slightly feminist I guess level where it, the whole kind of concept behind this thing is can men and women ever be friends and I was like yeah of course they fucking can but, but this movie is very good and obviously um, again Rob Reiner yeah Rob Reiner he's great um, I Nora guess... Ephron yeah, it's just like classic <laughs> uh, I, will, I will have to bring up one of my all-time favorite movies. I watched this a hundred times and it never. Ah, that's tremors again. Tremors again, um, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, if if you haven't seen Tremors, the the original one that has Kevin Bacon and Fred Warden in, please watch it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I know this movie uh, from line to line. I'm I'm not even kidding. I, every time it goes on TV, I watch it. I have it on Blu-ray. I have it on VHS. I have it on DVD. I have it on everything that you can imagine. <laughs> and uh, it just it it just can't get boring. It just can. Like I love these two men very deeply. They are very funny for me. And and it's it's one of the most perfect example for a, a very good body comedy. Uh, and uh, and just just please, if you can. Just watch Tremors. It's great. I can I can go by without talking about it again. And I am very disappointed in this book because it's not in it. So shame on you. I don't know. Why I, I, I have it's pro- <laughs> everything is probably not in here either. Uh, that's Jurassic Park, obviously. Obviously. Jurassic Park. Like, without saying what Jurassic Park. I am, I I am just checking like, it as well. Like, I, I, you know what? Here's a movie that I definitely need to see and I just haven't. And it's okay. really bad of me. Forrest Gump. You haven't seen Forrest Gump? I haven't seen Forrest Gump. Ah. <laughs> it's again, it's one of those things where I'm just like, I need to watch that. And then I yes. don't. <laughs> yes. It's... I'm just really bad at watching movies. Okay. I Then I, I will do a quiz with you. Okay. I will okay. just bring up a few movies and I, I want to know if you have seen them. Okay. Shameless uh-huh. list. Yeah. Um. No, actually, no, I haven't. Because when we watched in this list, we were in year eight, I think. Um, they wanted to put it on for us in uh, history. And my best friend and I decided that we weren't in a place where we wanted to watch that at all. Because we were like 13 or something like that. And it was like, no, no, thank you. So we went off and hit, like researched like Egyptian uh, gods instead <laughs> during our history lesson whilst they were watching it. Because we were just like, I don't want to do that and i should watch it at some point just to have it like Please do. as like a uh, 
I've said I've done that, but it, you know. Please, please do. Schindler's List is, um, it's the saddest thing that, you know. See, that's why I don't entirely I, I want know, to. But uh, here's the second part of that sentence that, that you need to see, because mm. we truly cannot forget what happened there. And, mm. uh, you know, um, I have um, an anniversary um, edition of the movie here somewhere somewhere far away so I can't reach it like this <laughs> um, and uh, it has a documentary uh, where Steven Spielberg actually founded the SOA Foundation uh, SOA means uh, soul in in he, 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 hmm, my brain farts how do you say it? Have brief? Have the, the language uh I will write it down and you can say it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you kind of lost me a little bit for a second. That's why I'm like... Hebrew? Hebrew? That's how, that's how you say it? Wait, it's too light. Yeah, it's Hebrew. Hebrew, thank you. I, I had no idea how to say it. Because I was like... When you come to, you, I, mean, I guess it's probably Hebrew, but like, I think the other <laughs> thing that, that a lot of Jewish people speak is Yiddish. So I was like, oh, what are you going for here? <laughs> Hebrew. Um, so that's a foundation that still works uh, today uh, and uh, what they did basically it's it's a wonderful documentary as well of how they uh, founded the whole thing and you know how it came together is that when Spielberg was making Schindler's List uh, they decided to get together as many testimonies that's how they uh, called in uh, from people who went through this horrible horrible thing as they possibly could uh, record them, record this story so they can get it to schools and they can put it into the education education system mm. um, and it's like you know they, I think they collected like 50,000 or something like that uh, testimonies from all over the world uh, including obviously Hungary as well uh, Germany, Krakow uh, and what not and um, you know, they, they do show a few from this, but they are, you know, um, educational uh, videos. So they are not as available as, you know, other things are. Uh, but I think the one that they put in there and and was, I think it's a very important thing, is uh, this, uh, this Jewish woman saying that uh, the thing is not about... It's, it's not about forgetting or forgiving. It's about learning from it. Mm. So it can never happen again. And, mm. I, and I think, um, you know, the film itself is beautifully done. Like uh, Liam Neeson's and Ralph Fiennes' uh, best performances today. Uh, uh, obviously, it has Ben Kingsley as well. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful film that is also fucking heartbreaking. And... Mm. Um, you know, I I encourage everyone to to please watch. I know it's hard to get through it, but please watch it. It's very mm. important that we we learn and you know never forget, because we we never should forget about this. So yeah, mm -hmm. that was uh, my TED talk. Thank you for coming. Yeah, good. Thank you. I, I will I will proceed and uh, uh, and ask for weddings and the funeral. No. What a fucking classic! <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I'm so bad at this. Oh my so god! Bad. I, I, I'm, I'm now a bit afraid, but I will say, Pulp Fiction. I've seen Pulp Fiction. That's excellent. The only Tarantino film I've seen. What do you mean the only Tarantino film? I haven't seen any. I, I, to be honest, I'm not going to lie to you. Tarantino pisses me off just as a human being, so I don't have that much interest in watching any of his films. Um. Oh, come on. He's a dick. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Tarantino. I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. He has Tell no me. interest in whether or not I like him, so I think I can live with... <laughs> but he's a fucking great director. No, I yeah. don't care. He's awesome. I don't care. Inglorious Masters is... My favorite Tarantino movie of all time. That is just... That is one that I wouldn't mind watching. I have thought about watching that a lot. Oh but, God. like, I didn't get that much out of Pulp Fiction. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I watched it and I was like, yeah. It's... I just... 
It's such a classic. Come on, Captain. Come I watched on. it because of um uh it was the year that uh Jamie Guinness did the the pop fiction dance string strictly, mm. which remains the best thing that has ever happened on Strictly. I won't hear otherwise. <laughs> I've watched that dance so many fucking times since then. It is insanely good. It was week four. I like Strictly a lot. Okay, That's I like fine. I like watching ballroom dancing. <laughs> that is completely fine. Uh, okay, it this was. one is a is a very sweet movie, and I yeah. would be very sad if you hadn't seen it. Mm-hmm. It's Babe. I haven't seen Babe. <gasps> Babe as well. You did good. You did good, pig. You did good. Yay. And I'm like, <laughs> that'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig. I love him. I love him. Okay, I'm not gonna say Toy Story because we know that. Obviously, I've seen Toy Story. Toy yeah. Story I grew up with. It was like that's like, like I said, a staple of my childhood. Fair, 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 fair. Braveheart. I haven't seen Braveheart. I will say that I think a lot of the movies that I ended up watching as a kid, I didn't where I kind of sit in my sort of family structure, my older brother is about two and a half years older than me. My younger brother is about six years younger than me. Mm. Um, I grew up watching all the movies that my older brother wanted to watch. Um, And then when I got old enough to kind of start making the choices to watch the movies that I wanted to watch, my younger brother was born. So we ended up watching all the movies that he wanted to watch. I didn't really have a period. I mean, yes, there were movies that I watched a lot because I wanted to watch them. I think my mother has told me that I, was very into Beauty and the Beast as a child <laughs> but like it's the reason why I haven't seen a whole lot of like the Disney princess films because I wasn't watching movies that I wanted to watch I was watching movies that I grew- that's why I grew up watching the original trilogy um Star Wars original trilogy so much because Harry loved the, the, the Star Wars movies and it's like that's great to be fair Toy Story was really a thing that Harry loved you know mm. growing up um so it's like there was there a lot of I feel like a lot of those films around that sort of period where you kind of sit down in front of the TV and just watch the same films over and over again, I didn't really have. Mm. Um, so that I feel like there's like a, probably a breadth of stuff that I just didn't really watch because I was watching the stuff that either my older brother wanted to watch or the stuff that my younger brother wanted to watch. Um, I mean, I had movies that I watched a lot as a kid. Like I have seen, I have seen Hairspray so many fucking times. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like I was um a period where I had uh the DVD player in my bedroom and it used to be what my brother and I used to put on in the evenings to go to sleep to so I've seen at least the opening bit to hairspray so many times. <laughs> Which remains excellent. I watched the end of hairspray with him the other day because I, I went downstairs it was like one in the morning and I went to go put like a cup in the dishwasher and I was like oh let me still up and he just walk in and he's watching like the end of hairspray from like the mm. uh the march mm. um right through to the end and then I was like this movie just rules <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> but yeah I just I mean I, yeah I have had I there are movies but they're like such strange sort of ones that I've seen a lot like I think I've seen Stormbreaker a ridiculous amount of times okay or um there was a movie about and I cannot remember what it's called now I always forget the title of it mm. but there was a movie about um and these are not classics these are just like weird movies that I picked up as a kid there was a movie about this girl whose dad ended up in hospital all of a sudden and then she her mother works for a bank and she and her friends decide to break into the bank to steal the money to pay for her dad's like I think he needed like a transplant or something and it's like a kid's heist movie and there's like go-karts involved and like it's like really super I think it came out like 2005 or something like that and it's got somebody like super famous in it she's like a like a free climber Mm. is the main girl in it I like there's so many little things about it it was a it was a fun little film i'm gonna see if i can find it um but it's like it's movies like that that i've seen a lot of the classics of stuff i just haven't seen you know i i this time around i'm not gonna say the title i'm just gonna say this what's in the box (laughs) yeah of course i've seen seven (laughs) it's a fincher movie i've seen all the fincher movies okay okay um that's that's good seven Uh, great or as i like to call it seven because it's seven and then it's got yeah. the number seven and it's the seven. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Usual Suspect. I haven't seen The Usual Suspect. No. 
Uh, there was a period where I was going to watch The Usable Suspect and then all the stuff about Kevin Spacey came out and it was like, ah, shit. Okay, <laughs> also, I, know- I found the name of the movie. It's called Catch That Kid and it's got Kristen Stewart in it. She plays the main character. Oh my God. That's my it's like in her like childhood era and ah. Cordon Bleu um, is also in it. He's like, kind of a I guess her best friend it's it's a it's a stupid like it's got 13% on Rotten Tomatoes but I've seen it a shit ton okay that's that's <laughs> fair I have films like that so I, I understand you know? I understand but uh, um, what did I want to say mm. I have no idea did it's you have another one uh, oh, oh yes 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 I know what I wanted to say uh, mm. I know Kevin Spacey is fucking awful yeah. and we fucking hate him but that movie is just fucking great it is. It's an excellent film. It rules. <laughs> it's a fucking great film. So it's a good movie. That movie. Yeah, I, I feel like I've talked about this a little mm. bit before on this, but like I remember watching it the first time, and I my brain went to a way darker place than the way that the movie actually ended up um, mm. uh, uh, playing out. Because it was this like, what's in the box? And in my head, I was like, oh, and forgive me for this. Just a little. This is gross. Um, I thought it was the baby. I thought I told that as well. I, and it was like, oh, it's a head. Oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> I was like, really? Because yeah. I was like, went really far on it. It was like, oh, it's a head in a box. I mean, yes, it's also awful, but not nearly as bad as what I was going I, that, That's what I thought as well. I was like, oh, ooh, whoa. no, awful. awful so awful. it kind of like really takes it out a little bit where you're like, oh, it's just a head. It's like, no, it's still bad. It's still, still bad. bad. It's still bad. It's still bad. It's still bad. Um, I'm going to say the thin hmm. red line. I have not seen the Thin Red Line. I don't think I even know what the Thin Red Line's about. <gasps> it's about the. Uh, Is it a war movie? No, no, no. Uh, it's a war movie. It's it's um it's about the. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. The Vietnamese war. Okay. Yeah. It's, I just. It's. Oof. It's a very heavy one. It's it's a very very heavy one. Uh, I will say, being John Markovich. I have not seen Beam John Markovich, but I was thinking about that recently because it came up in a, a, a video essay thing. Just like, um, actually, I will shout this out. I think they're not technically called Cinefix at the moment because they got bought by IGN and they're coming up with a different name. Mm. But they were called Cinefix and they do the best um, top 10 lists of like any okay. YouTube channel on, on uh, that do these because they do, they do them based on like things within that genre. Mm. And they've been doing a lot more of them recently after they kind of rebranded. Reband- um, yeah. But they, they talk a lot about movies like they, I think it was being John Malkovich that they mentioned in that film mm-hmm. in one of them recently, which is just such a batshit concept. Yes. <laughs> and the fact that also they were just like, yeah, we got John Malkovich. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's, it's a fucking great film. Uh, the Sixth Sense. Yes, I've seen The Sixth Sense. Cool. And I was very proud of myself to find out that I figured out The Sixth Sense part of the way through it I, without I knowing figured... anything about it before, it, uh, before I went. I was like, yeah, I, I know things. Well. Yeah, I yeah. am observant. I, 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 was, I was very proud of myself as well. Uh, Requiem for a Dream. No, but I started watching Requiem for a Dream, I think, and got part of the way into it and before realizing that it wasn't actually the movie that I wanted to watch. Because <laughs> I went into it kind of in the mindset of wanting to watch um uh eternal sunshine of a spotless mind which i also haven't seen <laughs> and then because it was like it was i was in the wrong mindset for it i got part of the way into it and i was like this is not i'm not having a good time with this and i turned it off it's a very heavy film it's a very well uh, i i would i will say that it's one of jared leto's best movies it's mm. very heavy i i only i've only seen it two times because i i i just can't i just can't only only <laughs> i i still i i love it but it's it's so heavy that i i can't watch it anymore uh but i highly recommend it uh yeah, i will I see like i will see a korean one uh that i really hope you you watch because it's fucking awesome i'm gonna say now the pro- the answer is probably no <laughs> I, I will still ask it's old boy oh i uh, no, i haven't seen old boy but i do want to watch that one that is please. definitely please um watch it I've heard really good things about Old Boy. Old oh, and Boys. right next to it is Goodbye Lennon in my book, which I have yeah. seen. We watched that in Goodbye general. Lennon. That's a great film. Yeah, it is a great film. Uh, Brokeback Mountain. I have watched Brokeback Mountain. Okay. Uh, man, that movie is sad. It is sad. It's like, oh my God. It's a really good film. Though. I watched that relatively recently, like in recent memory. Um, 
like I think probably within the past year I watched it. Mm. Um, I really have it in my letterbox when I watched it, to be honest. But yeah, I really, I really, really loved that movie. Yeah. It's so it's sad. It is very sad. Uh, Little Miss Sunshine. I love. I've talked about this before. I yeah, love you, that you movie. Did, you did talk about it. Okay, that's my bad. That's my love bad. that movie. It's, that's a great fucking film. It's 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 awesome. Up there is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. I haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth. I think my brother's studying that film studies at the moment for his A level, essentially. Oh my god, it's such a good film. Uh, that will be blonde. Nope. Oh my god. No country for old men. Nope, but I have meant to what that's that's definitely been up there as like I really should watch that for a long time. Yes, please. Um, please I know that my I think my mom didn't like it because she was like this is just really unrelentingly like awful <laughs> the entire way through. Uh, one of my favorite things here is this director Neil Blomkamp and District Nine. Say that again. District Nine. I have not seen District Nine. I do. I. I yeah. Again. So many movies. You know, after I finish work this week, I might watch a bunch of films. Oh my god. <laughs> you, uh, Black Swan? No, I have it. It's on my... It's one of those ones that I bought, like... And in you the, haven't watched it? I haven't watched it. I think it's still in the plastic wrap. Oh <laughs> my god. Gay, gay. Uh, it's one of those ones where I... H&B, I don't know if they still... Because there's not very many of them out and about anymore, but, like, if you go for, like, the A to Z section, you could usually get five for 20 quid. Yes. I think it's one of those ones that I just bought and was like, yeah, I should watch this. And then yes. it's on my... Uh... Yeah. I will say this, that it's it's not an accident that uh, Natalie Portman got the Oscar for it. Oh, yeah. I believe she's, she's meant to be... Fucking... I think it, it. it really is her best role uh, to date. She's awesome in it. And I'm then... So uh, <laughs> I, I have uh, two... Uh, one of them I talked about a lot. The other I didn't. But I am kind of hoping you see this. One of them is The King's Speech. I haven't seen the King's Speech. Ah, Katie, please watch the King's Speech. I love that movie so dearly. Oh my god, it's so good. Uh, and the other one is uh, is the one that actually made this actress very famous. Uh, and she was very young when she got nominated for an Oscar. Uh, I will say it has Jeff Bridges in it, and it's a western. So I'm guessing you probably have not seen this. And if you haven't, then please watch it because it's fucking awesome. It's called True Grit. And it's Haley no, Steinfeld. I have. I I know of um, True Grit, but I have not seen it. It's Haley Stein's one of Haley Steinfeld's first movies. She is <laughs> fucking great in it. That's where uh, I got to know her. That's uh, how I know her, and and uh, that's why I love her. She's just top top level. If you ask me, she should have gone uh, gotten the Oscar for it because she was fucking great. <laughs> I think just thinking of the movies that I did watch a lot as a kid, and the and I realized that the ones that came to mind, I there's like, uh, it's like it's all those sort of like Disney original movies that aren't like actual, like classic princess films that were the ones that I watched a lot as a kid. So like, okay. really obsessed with um, Ice Princess, oh, I which like is a Ice movie Princess. that I love. That movie, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then there's like there was like a there was like a horse movie that I used to watch, and I'm not a horse person at all. Um, it was never um, a horse girl. I never had horses, but it was like it was proper. Is it the Whisperer? No, let's see. Let's see. Me. Disney. I'm pretty sure it was a Disney movie. Horse film. <laughs> it's not Black Beauty. It's not Secretariat. That's a good one. Which I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't realize that Secretariat was like a real film. It's um, a very good one as well. Because uh, my uh, these are just these are just horses that are in Disney films. Spirit now. Isn't it the one where uh, the girl has an accident with the horse and she struggles to get back on it? So they got a guy to have her. her that own? sounds like every horse movie. Though. This is the thing. But they... Dreamer, it is the horse. It is the horse. Uh, it's called. Dreamer, but it's got Dakota Fanning in it. Okay, then I, I don't maybe know it's not it. Yeah, I, it's it's got Dakota Fanning and I think Kurt Russell. Because the one I talked about, talk about is uh, the one with Scarlett Johansson. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, I never thought that one. I don't know if this is actually it, but I, for some reason I definitely have seen that movie. It's like she, 
the horse was injured and she decides to rehabilitate it and it's mm. like these are like the stupid like small weird films that i'm like yeah i've seen that one a lot haven't seen let me just pick one of random that's black swan um Django Unchained, The Act of Killing, Nebraska. Oh, <laughs> or, of course you haven't seen Django Unchained because that's a Tarantino movie. Because that's a Tarantino movie. Yeah, I haven't seen fucking Forrest Gump or anything like that. Oh, God. Or Spirit. I haven't seen any Ghibli movies. Um, ah, no. Ugh. Ugh, this, is, this, <laughs> this is just me outing myself as being a terrible film student. Uh, oh, God. This is the day I die. It's, it's, I can feel it. I'm getting, I'm getting weaker. <laughs> I, I feel like to the way I watch films a lot is in the same way that I listen to music in that I will find something that I really like and then I will watch all the things to do with that thing very closely. Um, but I do not have a, I do not have a broad range of stuff that I've seen. But the things I have seen, I tend to be very detailed about, right? And also, as I've said this many times, my thing is television. I've watched way more TV series than I probably have any kind of films. Um, as have been mentioned by the lists and lists of shows that I've mentioned whenever we actually <laughs> we've talked about TV in the past. I'm like, there's this one, and this one, and this one, this one's my baby. And, I, <laughs> and it's not like, I do love films, but I like long form storytelling, I think way more than the, you know, and, and I will go through periods where I want to watch more films because there's be something about just sort of dipping into like a two hour thing and then just leaving it behind and going to a different thing. But like they are not, I've not had many of those over the period that I've kind of been, you know, picking up more films in my life uh, or like got really into the process of filmmaking since I was like what, 15 when I was doing media studies. You know, I have more stuff to watch which is great i'll always have more stuff to watch I just haven't seen yet you know uh before we go <laughs> watch watch these classics that we mentioned um and um, please go check out cinefix they will have way yes. more stuff and they'll do it in way more detail and like really convince you to watch some movies that you've never heard of before yes um specifically stalker because they talk about that one a lot I think it's, which is a Russian film, uh, which I also haven't seen, but like they talk about it all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and I have to ask you a question. Oh yeah? Yes. You have to. How do you make a tissue then? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> a tissue? A tissue. I don't know. You put some boogie in it. <laughs> All right, I kind of like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Oh, God. I had it in me for so long. Okay, it's out. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I appreciated that one. It was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, yes. So, uh, this is pre-recording because Katie is back to work uh, next week. Uh, but uh, I will remind you and I remind our listeners and everyone that don't forget our deal. Yeah, no, I haven't forgotten it. Good, good. Um, You're going to watch The Kingdom, novel. and yep. I'm going to watch... You're going to watch Leftovers. Yep. That's the deal. I'm going to have That's special episodes around them. They'll happen at some point. Oh, anyway, <laughs> they will, they will. Uh, but for now, one last thing. I could put some pictures in here today. I went to Festetich Castle, uh, which is where they shot uh, Shadow and Boon, and they will probably will come back i mean the, the, yeah two. let's be real the little palace is going to be very important it, in, it's going to be the next season yeah yeah so i i am guessing it's 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 going to happen what's again what's the main palace called again i, mean, I can't remember because the little palace is where the grisha live yes is the main palace just called the main palace or does it have a specific I name know. i genuinely can't remember i i can't remember either i'm not gonna lie to you i remember a little palace and then i don't know what's yeah the little palace is way more like it's, air time yeah yeah uh, uh, and and i think fashion castle was was the little palace like mm. it, it it was meant to be and you know i i've went there today because we were on our way back home and it's actually really close to where i live um and you know i even tweeted about it and i sent you pictures as well i did you I, did i wanted to share with you as well and i said it looked a bit like the winter palace from it, dragon it, age inquisition which it, i stand by because it does it does it does it does it's a very beautiful very beautiful hmm. palace uh and hopefully 
Next time I'm gonna be around there because I am actively working on this. I will either be an extra who dies in there. <laughs> which which can happen. Just like, put me in a kafta. Put me in a kafta. Uh, it can it can happen because you know there's there's things happening in the, in the second yeah. book. So you know, I I'm happy to die. Just saying it here as well. Uh, or maybe have a small role, just a tiny bit. I would be very happy. I'm I'm actively working on this. I'm not even lying. I'm like. No, I'm, I'm not. I I. I, I I believe you. <laughs> I am looking into it like crazy. I do have uh, some agencies here, so hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's all for today. And then we're going to see you next week with new things to talk about. Probably Free Guy as well, because I am watching Free Guy tomorrow. Oh, yeah, and I can't wait. I have to go to the cinema. Please. Like I want to. I want to talk about more about the Suicide Squad as well. So whenever you can. Yeah, I do it. need. To, I, I was, <laughs> was going to do that in the past couple of days, but then time got away from me again, and that's fair. Uh, working all this week. I really hope it's still there after Thursday. Uh, probably. Pro it's probably going to be there. Also, I am not happy that they delayed Venom again. So, I don't understand the reason behind it because you know, it's just till October. So I don't get it why it couldn't arrive in September. <laughs> I don't know. Reasons. We don't care. See you all next time. And take care and get vaccinated. I'm sorry I haven't seen all these movies. It's... Please forgive me. <laughs> also, you know what? Fuck it. If there's any movies you think I absolutely need to see, put them in the comments. I will comment. them in there. If it, the ones that Lily hasn't already mentioned, because, like, Fair. obviously. I, I will still write them down. <laughs> You don't need to. We've already, <laughs> we've already had this conversation. I want to hear from the people. Fine, I'm not going to write them back. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>